Now, today's top stories and Power of Five weather from News 5, sponsored by Akron Children's Hospital. Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio, and a very happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. As part of your gift, you get to enjoy your Sunday morning television. Forget the political ads that have dominated the airways over the last month. Tuesday's primary gave us the anticipated matchup for governor this fall of Mike DeWine versus former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. And in the race for U.S. Senate, Democrat Tim Ryan versus Republican J.D. Vance. That GOP battle being the most closely watched race in the country this week, with the endorsement April 15th of former President Donald Trump being the deciding factor. The November matchup of the 37-year-old Vance and 48-year-old Ryan expected to be equally captivating. Both uh, Ohio born and bred, both from humble beginnings, both with a story like that to tell, and really it'll be up to voters to decide. But of course, the biggest issue in voters' minds right now is an issue neither one of them can do much about, and that of course is inflation. Yes, the kitchen table pocketbook issues always loom large and weigh heavy on the party in power in midterm and presidential elections. The flip side for the Biden administration is to have that $1.2 trillion they'll soon be distributing across the country from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. That's what brought Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg to Northeast Ohio this week. The secretary, along with Northeast Ohio Congresswoman Chantel Brown, toured the Greater Cleveland RTA's training and development hub at Tri-C in Euclid. They also met with students in the program that is training the next generation of bus drivers, truck drivers, mechanics, and more. Ohio is set to receive nearly $12 billion in infrastructure funding over the next five years. Cleveland has already received over $65 million for transit this year. After that stop, the secretary met with students at Cleveland's Davis Aerospace and Maritime School. That's where I had a chance to catch up with them. Well, Mr. Secretary, always welcome in a state when you come bringing nearly $12 billion for roads, bridges, and public transit. But, you know, as you look down the pipeline, do, you, we, do we have the bodies in place to put that money to use to, to build the bridges, make the steel, to drive the buses? Well, that's part of what I'm working on and part of why I'm here right now. We got the funding lined up. Now we need to make sure that we have the raw materials, the equipment, and the workforce to actually get it done. The great news is there are going to be lots of good paying jobs delivering these infrastructure investments, but we do need to work with every organization and entity we can. That's why we're at Tri-C today. That's why we're with these high school students today who are actually already getting qualified in a lot of transportation related work, uh, working with everybody from organized labor to uh, uh, nonprofits in the business community to make sure that we're ready. I saw you talking with our new mayor, Justin Bibb, former board member of the RTA. Uh, did he have any asks of you with this money? Yeah, I've found that the mayor is very focused on how to use transportation to enhance the economy and, and quality of place and life uh, here in Cleveland. Uh, we've talked about transit, we've talked about complete streets, making sure streets are designed in ways that are safe and benefit everybody. And I expect we'll see a lot of applications. Uh, I expect they'll be very compelling ones from Cleveland and from the surrounding area. With the $66 billion that Amtrak is getting in the Infrastructure Act for expanded rail service in the U.S., the secretary said he hopes the DeWine administration takes them up on the offer to restore rail service between Cleveland and Cincinnati. In addition, he said the Port of Cleveland and other Great Lakes ports can help play a vital role in easing supply chain issues and they've been working with them to increase capacity. Cleveland screams infrastructure to me, the bridges, the, uh, the river, the, the roads, the airports, everything about it, and uh, creating more opportunities for people in this region. It's exactly why we work so hard on this infrastructure bill and why we're moving now to get those dollars to these communities because we know they're going to do a great job. All right, switching gears. Yesterday was the Kentucky Derby, and horse racing right now in Ohio is essentially the only sport where you can place a legal bet for money, but by January 1st, all sports will be on the table. I say for money because the folks at Jack Entertainment are giving the players a chance now to learn the nuances of sports betting. After all, when gambling came to Ohio a decade ago this week, slots needed no instructions beyond pulling a lever or hitting a button. Poker and blackjack players learn playing cards with friends. But sports betting is an entirely new form of gaming, new terminology. That's why the folks at Jack Entertainment have created the Bet Jack app. We feel that it's important for folks here in Ohio to get some experience and some exposure to the wide world of sports betting before real money is at play. And so we've developed this product that allows customers to, to explore uh, all the different betting markets that exist out there, and there are lots of them. What you'll be playing with are not actual dollars, but imaginary tokens. You download the app, you register, uh, which is super simple, uh, and you get 100 tokens a day that you can bet on, on anything you want, right? From table tennis to NBA playoffs to 
to the Guardians games that are that are going on now. So you can click on the Guardians, favored here by one and a half runs over the White Sox, and wagers say 10 tokens, and that's it. There are also the traditional prop bets, like with the NFL draft, including how many quarterbacks, running backs, or wide receivers, for example, will be taken in the first round. Or maybe you want to bet on the Browns, who are plus 200 to win the division, meaning you'll win 200 for every 100 you bet, giving you back 300 for a win. And the nice thing about a free-to-play training camp type product is you get to experiment with all that and, um, and, and figure out all of uh, all those nuances of sports betting before you actually have $100 of your hard-earned money on the line. And aside from a few tweaks, what you see now on the app will be what you see when sports betting goes live in Ohio, which will be no later than January 1st of next year. And a week from today, by the way, will mark 10 years since the first legal wager was made in an Ohio casino. We'll have more on that later this week. With Democracy 2022, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday. All right, temperatures today a little bit warmer than what we had yesterday. We start in the low 50s throughout the morning hours, but climb up into the 60s later on this afternoon. So temperatures in the 60s today, 70s as you make your way into the work week, eventually topping out at 80 on Thursday and Friday. Sponsored by Akron Children's Hospital.